Okay, so I think should be okay. Uh, I can start then, let me see. Okay, perfect. So my name is Paolo Ceccherini and I'm uh, the Global Public and Governmental Affairs uh, Director at Signify. Today, during these 30 minutes I will spend with you, I would like to uh, introduce you uh, to uh, the lighting uh, environment, the lighting world. And I would like to show you the solutions that lighting can bring to achieve net zero in buildings. Of course, later on, we, I, I, we can share some time for, for questions, for uh, any further deep dive you want. And you can chat, uh, you can type in the chat the questions and the uh, deep dive uh, uh, argument that you would like to understand and, and to know more from me. Uh, let me start with a short uh, uh, introduction about the company. Um, it, it's good to, to understand who we are and what we do for the environment. Uh, Signify is number one uh, lighting uh, manufacturer in the world. So we uh, produce uh, lighting sources, bulbs, lamps. We do luminaires system and services, and we are number one in LED lighting solution. In 2021, we deliver 6.8 billion sales, euro sales. Uh, 83 of, of sales are generated by LED lighting. That's also give the right perspective on how far we advance in sustainability solutions. Uh, we are 30, 6,800 people in 74 countries, and we are carbon neutral in operation. This is a great achievement we, uh, we reached in 2020, and it shows that we act on sustainability. We don't talk only on sustainability. Maybe you know uh, our brands. Maybe Signify is not uh, as, as well known uh, as the other brands and uh, for instance, Philips, I assume you know Philips as a global professional consumer lighting brand, but maybe you also know Hue and Wiz for connected uh, lighting in home applications, or you know Dynalight and Interact uh, for professional solution or even uh, color kinetics for architectural lighting systems. Um, moving forward, I would like to to anticipate to you um, that, that we really lead innovation that connect devices, people, places through lighting. And we contribute to a smarter and safer and even more sustainable world. Our business addresses the sustainable development goals through five strategic pillars, climate action, circular economy, food availability, safety and security, health and well-being. And uh, we have a dedicated program called uh, Brighter Lives and Better World, which is our North Star to double our positive impact on the environment and society within 2025. That shows that sustainability is really at core of everything we do. But in the meantime, what did we do? So in 2020, as I anticipate to you, we became carbon neutral in operations. That means 82% of our revenues are coming from sustainable products. 94% of electricity that we use is coming from renewables. And all the steps we did in order to become carbon neutral contribute to reduce saving of CO2 equivalent to 60 million trees absorption or half a million car off-road per each year. During COP26 in Glasgow, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate has awarded us for our leadership on climate action. And since 2017, we are number one and within the top 1% of Dow Jones Sustainability Index. So that's it. I, I, I thought, I think yeah, I've been so uh, enough brief to provide you an overview of what we do, who we are, and now let's move forward. And I would like to talk about the role and the power of lighting 
to enable the achievement of net zero carbon in buildings. And to do so, I would like to start with the screenshot of the World GBC Statement on Operational Carbon. This is key to position all the available lighting solutions that can be implemented. You see some keywords highlighted here, saving energy, reducing consumption, striving for efficiency must be done, securing that at the same time, we have a high level of performance of the people living in and working in buildings. Otherwise, we could simply switch off lights and it's done. But clearly, this is not what we want. I would like you to keep in mind this for the rest of my speech. Performance is key. But what does performance mean? Performance means that people are at the center of our designing. Indeed, the World GBC research that is quoted here says that the integral cost of a building is mainly with people, 90%. That's why we should focus on the design of lighting around people. The, result, the research has shown very transparently the way in which strategies that maximize health, well being, productivity are compatible and with strategy that minimize energy and resource use. And even the strategies to maximize health and, and, and well being enhance the, the latter. So at the end, what we want is high quality buildings that means health and product, productive building but at the same time, low carbon and resource efficient building. And you know what? There is a virtuous circle of good building concept that works both for people and the planet. I anticipate here in this slide, some of the examples of what we will see later on, but it's good to have this in mind before we start deep diving on, on lighting. So good location. It means not only enabling low carbon commuting or easy access to services. Today, due to the blended working mode, so for home or in office, it also means good space management, planning and availability, booking desks, all that can be done with our connected lighting systems. Good behavior, it means adaptability and engagement of people with lighting systems and systems in general. That means personalization of lighting, so the right amount of light when needed, or adapting lighting and blinding, for instance, during daytime. Good design, it means designing the lighting system to benefit at max from natural lighting and using occupancy detection to have light only when needed. Why should we have lighting on if nobody's there? Good technology. It means smart controls that are able to dialogue with multiple systems. So easy reconfiguration of the, lay the layouts, upgradable devices. Health and, and well-being. It means manual adjustment of the light. It means being able to have what you feel you need at that specific time. Now, having said that, and please bear it in mind for the rest of the presentation, the next step is to show, is to know that the carbon impact of lighting is dominantly at operational stage, 90 to 95%. Only four to 10% is to deliver and to install the lighting system, and only max 1% is to dismiss the lighting system. Therefore, if you look at the graphic that you find over here, you see where improvements in lighting can bring benefit to the chain. So of course, we are operational neutral, so we should not consider the, 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 the part on the far left side. We should focus on the middle part, the use and maintenance of the building. This is where most of the benefits are coming from lighting. But of course, four to 10 is not something to forget about. 
this is before the use, and zero to one percent is after the use. And if we want to keep attention on the middle part, we should also take into account the two keywords that are highlighted there, use and maintain the building. This is also very important. Don't think only at use of the lighting system. So don't think about lighting bringing benefit when you switch on the, the switch. It also, it, it brings a lot of benefits when you keep uh, the maintenance of, of the building. And I'll show you later on in a few minutes. Now, uh, it's time to go through some example of good practices with lighting in buildings. And I would like to start with offices. Uh, I believe I should not repeat some of the numbers that you see on the screen, as most of the other speaker already mentioned. That. But what I would like you to remind is, for instance, that the amount that business could save with the right lighting installation is huge. And the, the saving you see over here are the one that can count for efficient office buildings. In terms of lighting, if you move to LED lighting and systems, you can save up to 80% of energy consumption. And you know, uh, uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning, um, the health and well-being of the people working in the office is key. 70% of the people after COVID said that it is very important to keep attention on the climate changes. Now, pandemic has fundamentally changed the way we work. So we entered in a flexible future way of working. And I would say a flexible present way of working. Here are some key figures that prove my statement. So for instance, 70% uh, of chief executives plan to cut back on offices. 72% more of workers lack said that they want an average remote model. And I assume you are all working partly from home and partly from office. 32% of uh, Google employees want to return to their office, but not every day. And at PwC, 65% uh, of executives believe that the office is crucial to increase uh, employee productivity. So when you are at office, you need to have a good office. Uh, and that's really key. What does it mean? It means, and I, I go back to the key, two keywords that I ask you to remind, use and maintenance. For what is concerning use, it means that more blended areas are needed in, in the buildings. So less corridor, but more coffee areas that becomes working areas, desk areas that becomes meeting areas. And therefore lighting must be able to adjust to the needs of the people working there. Using the second keyword, man maintenance of the building, flexibility in the office layout is needed because we need to allow different teams to occupy the same areas on alternate days, for instance, or we need to create spaces for specific tasks that are performed in that area and that can change. Or we need to create spaces, uh, we need to facilitate fast rotation of renting customers or changing occupancy agreement more frequently. So smart lighting enables almost instantly re the remapping of the layout. So you see how beneficial is lighting both for use and maintenance of the buildings. We said that we need to have people as the, at the center of the design of the lighting system. We need to enable them to control their surrounding via easy to use app. And that's what we do. They can adjust the temperature, dim the lights, even find the best seat. For example, being able to adjust the light levels 
to correspond to the time of the day or the task you're performing, or increase the autonomy and ensure employees to experience the eye visual comfort. How do you do that? You do if you can control individual lighting on your desk, in the area you're entering. And, and you know what we found? That on the contrary, what you could expect, manual controls means less consumption because you really use the light, the right level of light that you need in the exactly when you need. And if you are looking to attract new tenants, then prioritizing health and well being should be your starting point. After pandemic, buildings need to be better than before by putting the needs of the people first. Uh, the pers prospective tenants care about healthy spaces to facilitate transition to the new standard way of working. And building that meets the high, highest standard of health and well-being will gain the trust of the employers. And therefore, they could easily come back to office. You know, one of the most difficult uh, um, tasks today for uh, tenants of the office and employers is to bring people back to office. And if you have the right type of environment, so if you aim to design your lighting in, in, in installation with health and well-being, that it's easier. It makes easier for you to convince your people to come back. Data also creates value. Um, and the lighting system can be a very important vehicle to transmit data. You know, we can improve only, sorry, we can improve only what we measure. And the dashboards within our lighting system can do so. So our energy dashboard give you total transparency of your building energy consumption. Occupancy data enables you to optimize your floor plan. And from desk booking to lighting controls, data allows employees to control the surrounding, increasing the workspace satisfaction. So numbers helps across all the chain, not only in, in, in planning, in having flexible workspace, but also in sustainability and in well-being, knowing what the people occupying the building do at a certain time, uh, hour in time, uh, it enables you to plan carefully uh, the next generation of building. Why should we have two different systems for lighting and, for instance, uh, air conditioning when they use the same info? Or even we can add blinders to the network that is used for lighting controls and much more because the goal at the end is the same. We want to achieve the well-being of the people staying in the building. It also means having one single system. It also means reduction of cabling, connections, system devices, energy consumptions. Open APIs means that data collected via, via our lighting system can be used to integrate other systems at once. For example, measuring natural light contribution on the desk can be used to reduce the artificial lighting levels, to reduce glare, to move blinders, and to reduce the need for air conditioning. So to have additional saving across the chain and not only for just for lighting. But when we talk about data, we need to be careful. What smart lighting does is to provide security, not only in the transmission of data, but also using the lighting installation through Li-Fi to transmit data information instead of Wi-Fi. And for those who do not know, Li-Fi is a protocol for data transfer through the lighting installation. So, so through the luminaires, you get data instead of the wireless connection. 
and the broadband achieve 10 gigabyte per second. Uh, what does uh, Li-Fi provide benefits for? For instance, enables easier networking, no additional high-speed cabling or routers, no extra protection devices, because only when the light is, then you can have data transmission. Uh, easy access to guests or temporary workers. All of this is done by the Li-Fi solutions. Smart lighting is also reliable. I know that some of you can believe, can think that lighting, uh, sophisticated lighting technologies and uh, lighting controls uh, are the future and not the present. That's not true. In 2021, we have installed 83 million connected light points. This is more than showing that smart lighting is reliable. Smart lighting is also scalable. Uh, and the scalability is at least on three levels. Scalability in size, so you can start with a smaller grade in your building, even a single room. Then you, when you find the right configuration, you can scale up to the full building. And you can even expand with the same technology to all your offices. Scalability and capability. So you can start with uh, the goal to save energy only for lighting. Then you can add energy reporting, remote management, and even you can have a perfectly interconnected system for all your devices from air conditioning, ventilation, blinders, uh, lighting controls, and, and anything you want to add. And it's also scalable in application areas because you can have different solution or depending on the use of the area you are installing the lighting solution. So. Uh, in, in pure office working areas, you can have the same devices that can be used in uh, the coffee areas or in the entrance of the building or in the warehouse of the building. Same technology to provide different solutions. Okay, uh, we extensively spoke about office. I would not take too much time for a few more uh, um, solution application. I will start with manufacturing. And here again, I would not repeat uh, most of the numbers that you have already heard today. Um, but what is really important is to understand the potential of lighting solution over, over here in manufacturing. And just, just some bullet points that bring you the a uh, sense of what uh, I, I would like you to, to get out of this presentation. You know, uh, in manufacturing, IoT is becoming very important and light infra infrastructure can be used as a mean to bring the IoT information through the shared sensor or through Li-Fi. And creating better and safer place to work means that you have less mistakes, less wasted material, less wasted energy and wasted production, less stock, or even more on-time production, short time to market. So, you know, uh, you understand that lighting can be a enabler for all kinds of improvement that you introduce in your lighting, in your uh, uh, facility. And also, uh, the way you use the data can be shared through the optimization tool using the production area. Whereas in, this is uh, another area where there are a lot of potential of improvement. Just think about the 3 billion square meter of warehousing buildings required a lidification. That's key, this gives you the sense of how far we can go in order to achieve uh, energy saving. But again, energy saving is not the only advantage you can, you can get. Better lighting means less paper, less carton for boxes, less mistakes, less checking procedures, and you can easily 
bring flexibility by changing the type of good stock, worksheet. Uh, you know, nowadays speakers are, support, are, are supported by IoT. If you have a, a flexible environment, and now I'm talking about a flexible lighting solution, then you can easily adapt your space to what you find inside the space. Now, uh, we focus on the, uh, uh, on the operation, but I would like to give you some more hints on what can be done outside operation. So what I mean is, let's not think about the middle part of the picture, but let's also focus on what is coming before and what's coming after. So if you remember something about the 1% and the 10% that you find over here. And this is about the new 3D printing technology to produce luminous. This is a huge opportunity to introduce improvement and reduce the carbon footprint because the printing on the, of the uh, elements are, is on demand. And the device that you buy has no paint, less part, no screws. It's fast delivery, low transportation cost, and therefore low, lower CO2 impact. Here you see some numbers. Thanks to the 3D printing, you have 76% lower CO2 emissions. Due to lighter and easier to transport luminar, you have 28% reduction in CO2. Of course, you use LED technology, so I would not mention that. But in, on the disposal of the lighting installation, you have 27% less CO2 emissions. And recycling is so easy being polycarbonate fully recyclable. And you, there are many companies that already introduced in their application 3D printing luminous. You see some brands over here. But now let me finish in view of time and let, let me recap. You know, uh, many technologies like hydrogen, renewable technology, electric vehicle and so on are very sexy topics. But if you think about the future, then you have the future now if you think about lighting. The technology is already there. I would say at stock to bring immense saving. And I would close uh, by showing you this picture. This picture is representing uh, the potential annual saving by upgrading buildings to LED lighting solution. In Europe only, we could say we could save 96 million euro, meaning 83 million tons of CO2. And you see the numbers across the globe. 54 million euro and 47 million tons of CO2 in North America, or 80 million euro and 69 million tons of CO2 in Asia and Pacific. So impressive, isn't it? Uh, I didn't uh, talk about uh, best cases application. You find in details a huge amount of application in the website. So I would like to thank you for your attention and also thanks to the World GBC team for organizing this event and hope to get some questions from you. Thanks. Let me see. I see one question from Sarah. Yes, you're right. That's correct. Um, I, I will I will comment uh, later on separately to because in due time I, I, it's already uh, four o'clock, so it's better to connect uh, later on.